What's up you guys? So not too long ago, I posted a video on how to set up Alacrity and a lot of you recommended that I try out WesTerm. They're both fast GPU accelerated terminals written in Rust that are also cross platform so you can use them on your Mac, Windows or Linux machine. But WesTerm does have some additional features like ligature support. I really like that the configuration language is Lua and overall it's just a really nice terminal emulator and I've been using it ever since you guys recommended it to me. By the end of this video, you'll be able to take your boring plain default terminal and turn it into a pretty amazing terminal setup with WesTerm. In the description, you'll find a blog post with all the code that I'm gonna be using. That said, let's get started. All right, so I have the default Mac terminal open here. The first thing we need to do is to install WesTerm. I'm gonna do this with Homebrew, so make sure you have Homebrew installed. I'm also using ZSH for my shell, which is the default on a Mac. If I do echo and dollar sign zero, you'll see that it says ZSH. If you're on Linux or Windows, I recommend you take a look at the WesTerm installation instructions for your specific system in the documentation. To install it with Homebrew, I can do brew install dash dash cask was term. If you don't have homebrew installed, you can take a look at the blog post where I have instructions on how to do that. You also need to make sure you have git installed. Again, I'm going to do this with homebrew. I'm going to do brew install git. And the next thing you're going to want to do is to install a nerd font. This is so that the icons we're going to be using in our setup can show up properly. In the previous video I made on how to set up Alacrity, there was an extra step involved in installing this nerd font through Homebrew. But after some recent changes, now you can just do brew install and the name of the nerd font you want to install. These are all stored in the homebrew cask repository. The one that I use is called Meslo nerd font and to install it we need to do font dash Meslo dash LG dash nerd dash font. All right now I'm going to close this window with command Q and I'm going to use command space and look for Wes term which we previously installed and press enter. And now we can start configuring WestTerm itself. This is gonna be really similar to my Alacrity setup, but in this case, the configuration is done with the Lua programming language, which is the same language that is used to configure NeoVim. And I find this to be a really nice feature of WestTerm. I'm gonna use touch to create the file and it's gonna be located in our home directory slash dot dot Lua, which is the name of the file. And then you can open this up with your editor of choice. You can use something like text edit by doing open a text edit tilde slash dot wes term dot lua. That'll open it up with text edit. Or if you have VS code installed, you can also do code tilde slash dot wes term dot lua. And that'll open it up in VS code. Now I'm gonna open the wes term dot lua file with NeoVim, which is what I use. I can do nvim tilde slash dot wes term dot lua and press enter. Now I can add the following, which will allow us to set up our configuration. Over here, we're loading the WesTerm module, and then we're getting the config builder and saving it in a variable called config. Now config is essentially a table and we can set the value of different fields to configure WesTerm. The first thing I wanna do is set up the font and to do this, we can set the value of a field called font and make it equal to westerm.font, which is a function. And inside we pass a string with the name of the font that we want to set up. In this case, I wanna do meslo lgs nerd font mono, which is the name of the font that we installed earlier with homebrew. Then I want to set up the font underscore size, and I'm going to set this to 19. This is up to you, and it also can depend on your screen's resolution. Now, before I continue, we can keep adding configuration options here. And the last thing we'll do is to return the config table. I'm going to save this and I'm actually going to quit WesTerm with command Q and press Y for yes. And then I'm going to do command space and look for WesTerm again. And again, I'm going to open up the WesTerm.lua configuration file with NeoVim. 
Now that we had the configuration file created and we quit and restarted WESTERM, it's now aware of our configuration and any further changes we make to this file will automatically get applied, very similar to what happens when you make a configuration change in Alacrity. So the next thing I wanna add here is an option to disable the tab bar. That's because I don't really use the WESTERM built-in tabbing, but this again is up to you. Before I disable it, I do wanna point out that if you wanna use it, you can do command and T, and that'll create a new tab. And if you do command shift and opening bracket, you'll go backwards and command shift closing bracket, you'll go forwards. I'm gonna type exit here to close this tab. I'm just gonna disable it with enable underscore tab bar is equal to false. And then if I save this, you'll see it goes away. Another thing you can do is to modify the top here where we have the resize buttons. You could hide this title bar if you wanted to. You can do config dot window decorations equal to none, for example. If I save this, you'll see that the top there goes away, but there's no way to resize the window if you have none here. So I wouldn't recommend you use this. Instead, you can do resize, and then you can actually resize the window with your mouse. The default you were seeing earlier is title, and then a pipe symbol, and resize, so that you enable both. And you'll see there that it comes back. I typically resize windows with my window manager, so I'm gonna personally keep this with resize. Now the last thing I wanna do is to change the colors of WESTERM to my custom theme. This is the same one that I created for Alacrity, and what's really nice is that we can just add it within this file. We can do config.colors, and that's equal to a Lua table, and in here I'm gonna add the following. You can find this code in the blog post. I'm just gonna save this file. I've designed this color scheme to match nicely with my NeoVim config. And then finally, if you wanna add some opacity or background blur, you can do so with the following two options. This first option will allow you to change the opacity of the window. And if you're on a Mac, you can also change the background blur. I believe the background blur goes from zero to 100 and it defines the blur radius, so how blurry you want the background to be and this goes from zero to one, where zero is completely translucent and one has no transparency. If I save this, it'll get applied. You can see a very subtle difference here around the edges. I can also lower this opacity value to 0.5, for example, and it'll be a lot more translucent. Let me set this to 0.8. Now, if I quit NeoVim with colon Q and enter, you can see this a lot more clearly. If I were to have something like VS Code open, I have the terminal window on top. You'll see it show up behind it with some blur applied as well. If you want NeoVim to be transparent, let me open up my NeoVim config, which is located in my .config slash NVim folder. This is for those of you that are using my setup under Lua, Holcyon, Plugins, Color Scheme. I've updated the code so that you can change this transparent variable to true or false. If I change this to true, and I close and reopen NeoVim, then you'll see now that it is also transparent. You can take a look at my NeoVim configuration code in the repository for my dot files linked in the description. Right now I'm gonna disable the opacity and background blur, so I'm going to comment these two lines out and save this. Now, as you've probably seen in my other terminal setup videos, I use Power Level 10K for my theme. We need to install it. I'm gonna do brew install Power Level 10K. And then we need to execute the following code. You can grab this from the blog post, which will add what we need to enable Power Level 10K to our .zshrc file. And then we can reload this file with source tilde slash .zshrc. That'll open up the Power Level 10K configuration wizard. Now over here, the icon looks good because of the nerd font we installed. So let's do Y for yes. Y, Y, Y. I've been using the lean style with one, Unicode with one, eight colors with two, the current time in 12 hour format. So one, two lines with two, dotted with two, left frame with two, and I've been using black with one. And I want sparse, so two. Many icons, so two. Concise, so one. 
and I don't want the transient prompt, so n for no, and 1 for verbose. And then finally, y for yes to overwrite the config file, and y for yes again. Sweet, so everything is looking really, really nice now. Now the rest of my setup is pretty much the same as the Alacrity setup that I showed you guys in a previous video of mine. I'm just going to run through this briefly. There's a couple of extra things that I like to install. I'm going to do brew install and I'm going to install zsh-auto suggestions and zsh-syntax-highlighting and press enter. To set up auto suggestions, you can run the following code. Again, you can find this in my blog post. And to set up the syntax highlighting, you can use the following code. Both of these just add the necessary lines to .cshrc, and then we can source the zshrc file like so. And now if I start typing out a command, I get the auto suggestions. You can accept one with the right arrow. And you'll see here that this green means that this command is valid. And that's from the syntax highlighting. If I go back here, you'll see that it turns red. I also like to improve the history completion. I'm going to open up the zshrc file like so with NeoVim. Then at the bottom here, I'm going to add the following to make some changes to how the command history is managed. Then I'm going to write in quit with colon x and enter. Then you need to figure out what your up and down arrow keys are. You can do cat dash v and then press your up arrow and then your down arrow. And so these are the two that you need. Open up the zshrc file again. Go down to the bottom here, and I'm going to add the following two lines. This is for my up arrow. Use whatever output you got for that, and this is for my down arrow. And then I'm going to save and quit with colon x and enter. Now I'm going to do source tilde slash dot cshrc, and if I start typing a command like ca for cat and press the up arrow, it'll complete it according to the command that I started typing. If I do so and press the up arrow and up arrow again and again, it'll continue going back in the history. And then you can use your down arrow to go to more recent commands. Now I also use EZA and Zogside for a better LS and a better CD. So I'm gonna do brew install EZA and Zogside. These are some really nice tools. You can learn more about them in my CLI tools video. Then again, I'm going to open up my ZSHRC file like so. And at the bottom, I'm gonna add an alias for LS, which is gonna be equal to EZA and I want to always enable the icons like so. And then finally, I'm going to add the following to enable Zoxide and create an alias for CD equal to Z and save and then quit. Now Zoxide, after you start using it, remembers the directories that you've visited and you can use only a portion of its name to go back to it. So for example, I have a directory called SvelteKit blog. If I just type CD Svelte, it'll take me back to that directory. You need to first visit this directory like normal, and then you can use just a portion of its name to navigate to it much more quickly in the future. And if I use ls, it'll look a lot nicer because of EZA. Now, WESTERM does have some built-in functionality for split panes. I personally just use Tmux for this, and this is what I prefer. This is how I manage all of my programming sessions and working on different projects. But if you do want to use the built-in panes functionality, you can use Control Shift Alt and Percent to create a vertical split, or Control Shift Alt and double quote for a horizontal split. To navigate through these, you can use Control Shift and a arrow key, so up, down, left, right, so on and so forth. I'm gonna close these with exit and exit. If you wanna use my Tmux setup instead, I recommend you check out my dedicated video on that. To give you a quick rundown on how to set this up, you can install Tmux with homebrew like so, brew install Tmux. Then you can use the following command to use my tmux config. It'll get saved to your home directory slash dot tmux dot conf. I'm gonna press enter here. And you'll also want to use the following command to install tpm or the tmux plugin manager. 
and then you can do tmux and press enter to start it up and do control a followed by shift i this will install the different plugins for tmux that i use and then you can press enter if the bottom status bar isn't working properly for you you might need to install a newer version of bash and to do that you can do brew install bash if doing control a and shift i didn't work for you you can also first try doing tmux source tilde slash dot tmux dot conf and then do control a and shift i now if you want to create a split pane you can do control a and pipe a horizontal split with control a and dash and you can navigate between panes with control h to go left control l to go right control k to go up and control j to go down if you want to create a new window you can do control a and c and if you want to see your team of sessions you can do control a and s Again, if you want to learn a lot more about Tmux, I recommend you check out my dedicated video on it. Westterm also has some built-in multiplexing similar to what Tmux does. You can learn more about that in the official documentation. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting and helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.